She's alive! She's alive! That's right, April O'Neil here, live for Channel 3 Eyewitness News. I thought you were Channel 6! That was the cartoon. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. The Five Points are Articulator Packaging, Presentation, Posability, Playability, and Price. I'm Jason, and for the entire month of October, we're going to have some very special Halloween reviews. Today, our tour of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles turned Universal Monsters continues with Raphael as Frankenstein and April O'Neil as his bride. Starting off with the packaging, and they have a similar motif to what we saw with Michelangelo. Strictly speaking, Raphael was first, picture and logo on one side, other turtles on the opposite side. Back then, April as the bride had not yet been revealed, barcode for those who want it, and another incredible collage on the back. He'll be shell-shocked. See the terrifying turtle with attitude. Pure terror from the sewer. I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon! Again, though, I really love this. And honestly, the same with April. These paintings are by Daniel Horn, and they are stunning. Fun fact, I know it's Daniel Horn because NECA always gives credit. Another fun fact is that I have a poster of Spider-Man by Daniel Horn that I've had since childhood. Barcode for those looking for April, and even more fun on the back. Witness all the gruesome journalism, or as I like to call it, the Jameson. Of course, we know these are window flaps and that it's what's inside the counts, but for packaging, I'm giving these two one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and even though these characters are different heights, both of them stand at seven inches on the dot. This was an incredibly strong start for the line. The level of both sculpted and painted detailing is absolutely spectacular, and also just the general size of it. Raph has the quintessential Frankenstein flat top, or as I like to call it, the Jameson. Staples and stitches holding him together, and not only does he have the neck bolts, he also has this hose connecting him to a gauge. The gauge actually has a plastic cover over it to make it look extra real, and there's another one over his heart. Such a cool thing they added. Just like the regular Frankenstein monster, he has a tattered suit, his belt is made of chains, and instead of hoops for his size, he has door handles that have been riveted into his body. Naturally, he does still have his elbow pads, his wrists are sufficiently stitched together, traveling down the leg we have the knee pads, as well as giant platform boots. They have bolts in the ankle and inch toe. Flipping him around in the shell might just be the coolest part. I've already showed you this gauge, but down here we have another door handle where the chain snakes through, and even a section of manhole cover riveted in. Admittedly, April isn't as impressive, but a lot of creativity still went into this. Of course, she has that signature Bride of Frankenstein hairdo. She also has a likeness of Judith Hogue. This is honestly one of the areas where I'm kind of torn. I love that it's her, and I'm sure that Judith got a great kick out of being part of this. On the other hand, it's the same basic face they already gave us. Granted, it's a good face, and I see why they'd want to reuse it, but it also makes her look just so darn friendly. I look at this, and I don't really see April as the Bride of Frankenstein. More April dressed up as the Bride of Frankenstein. You get what I'm saying, right? Right. Even so, again, it's been sculpted and painted really well. You can see where they took their basic design cues from the movie, but also very smartly made her coat nice and long and yellow. Interesting little gauge around the collar. That connects to her neck and back, just like the actual bride. She's covered with bandages underneath. Lots of great texture and paint wash in those. Of course, she's got stitches all over and also bugs. It's funny, but seeing the stitched up blue leg kind of makes me think of Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. And like Raph, she does have some wedges. While I do wish that April had a slightly scarier expression. You can't deny that, just like Frankenstein's monster, these figures are incredibly well put together. For her presentation, I'm giving this power couple one whole point. Moving on to posability, and both of their heads are on dumbbell joints. They can look up this much, April definitely more so. Pretty decent tilt, but again, April more so. And of course, side to side. Swivel hinge shoulders, but again, April definitely has the better range. Similar to Mummy Angelo, Raffenstein has double jointed elbows. Again, this is accomplished with two swivel hinges. That means that the arms can flex and also swivel. Conversely, April only has a single jointed swivel elbow, and yet she actually does cut a deeper bend. This, of course, is due in part to the elbow pads. Traveling all the way down the arms, and both figures have swivel hinge wrists. And then shifting to the torso, because Raphael is wearing a suit, he actually does have a joint in the waist. You can definitely get a bit of twist in there, as well as tilt. Same thing with April. Below the waist, and both figures have ball jointed hips. No problem at all moving Raph. Even so, he can't really kick all that far, but he does get a pretty decent split. He also has got pretty ample twist. April, of course, is encumbered by this skirt, 
Although this slit does help, using that slit and she can kick forward this far, which again is more than Raphael. And again, using the slit she can spread this far. That said, she does get really good twist. Both figures have double jointed knees. Just like with Mikey, the top piece is a swivel hinge and the bottom is a regular one. So not only can the knee bend, it can also swivel. It's designed to take the place of a thigh cut. And while I do think that it's functionally good, I also think it's a bit distracting. Putting some bandages here would have gone a long way to hide that cut. Raph, of course, doesn't have that problem because of his knee pads. Unfortunately, because of those knee pads, he can only bend this much. Lastly, their ankles can hinge and pivot. For her pose ability, this round goes to April. Oh, it's not that kind of video? I know I probably sound like I'm making excuses, on account of I am, but honestly, the Frankenstein monster not being super poseable really doesn't bother me. For her pose ability, I'm giving these two one whole point. Moving on to playability, and Frank and Raph is a little bit light on accessories, but it's kind of understandable. For one thing, there's already a lot of plastic in that box. For another thing, there really isn't a whole lot he needs. He comes preloaded with these reaching out hands. Just like Mikey, he comes with a pair of fists and also accessory holding hands. Those are for these very, very awesome size. I love the lightning bolt and the electric prongs. Really does look like it's straight out of Frankenstein's lab. Hey villagers, I've got some pitchforks of my own. And when he's not using them, they slot in like so. Moving over to April and she is jam packed. First things first, we have this alternate head. Again, though, it's just the alternate portrait that came with the original. And you know what? This one's even friendlier looking. What can I say? Judith Hogue is a nice lady. She also comes with a very mean pair of rats. I hear if you flip them around, you might see some very curious surprises. Those aren't the only critters, however. April includes a tarantula, just the right size for your carpet goblins. She also has a purse, which will be perfect for swinging at whatever this universe's version of the foot soldiers are going to be. Very nice texture and paint. The padlock's a nice touch, as is the bone, and also the chain. Very fashionable. And just like Raph, she has alternate accessory holding hands, and those hands are sized for this. It's a combination bow staff, microphone, Frankenstein contraption. Nice little power box there. This is honestly really cool. And she can hold that like so. It's just what she needs for reporting the news, or for singing. Ooh, sweet mystery of life, at last I found you! She also comes with one more accessory perfect for this hand. Her very own Frank and Raph Psy. This is such a clever addition and really made me rethink how I felt about the line. At first I was a bit bummed out that they didn't just repeat what the original series versions were, but these aren't based on the original series. They're based on the movie. And in the movie, April finding Raphael Psy is kind of a big deal. So much so that there are a lot of people online that actually ship these two. Shipping, by the way, for those of you my age and older, is when fans speculate the two characters either are or should be in a relationship. It often involves fan art or fan fiction imagining what such a relationship would look like. In that regard, making these two Frankenstein's monster and the bride does make a lot of sense. And yeah, the lightning bolt Psy is a lot more logical. Same thing with the Ankh Nunchucks. Point being, as much as I would have liked a one-to-one -one remake, I really do like where this is going. But playability is more than just explaining shipping to people who are already on the internet. It's also about how well your figures play with others. Which, come to think of it, is kind of the definition of shipping. Unfortunately, the only other April O'Neil figure in my collection is the movie version. Then again, if you're only going to have one, that is a pretty good one. As for Raphael, here we have a reissue of the 1988 original. Here we have the space version. Here we have the wind-up one. And here we have the movie one. For the only other monster turtle we've looked at so far, and here's Mummy Michelangelo. But for some other Frankenstein monsters, and here we have the real Ghostbusters. Here we have Diamond Select. And here we have NECA. That said, for some other NECA Universal monsters, and here we have the Mummy, and the Wolfman. For just a few other monsterized versions of famous characters, and here we have the Marvel Legends Zombie Captain America. Here we have the bootleg Marvel Select Colonel America. Here we have the deceased Joker. And for a flat top, gruesome journalism comparison, here they are with the Jameson. For a relative scale comparison, here's Raph and April with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Not 
only are these two a match made in heaven. If by heaven, of course, you mean a mad scientist laboratory. But they come with everything you could want or need. For playability, I'm giving Raph in April one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. As of this recording, Raphael is available on GameStop.com for only $31.99, which I think is incredible. I found April at Target for $36.99, which admittedly isn't as good of a deal, but when you consider what she all comes with is still a pretty decent value. Putting them together and these two were so good, it's shocking. For price, I'm giving Raph in April one whole point for a grand total of 5 out of 5. For more Universal Monster Ninja Turtles, check out this video on Michelangelo as the Mummy, or for more Frankenstein, click here. Thank you so much for watching, I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice, have fun, and stay spooky!